Again, the Gene Success Answer Ninja broadcast. I'm Pastor Robert Scales. I tell you, it's been a glorious week, Saints. Teaching on the words of eternal life. Oh, oh, you gotta, you gotta get this. This is so important. We've been reading out of John six. I want to start at sixty-three. Um, Jesus said, "It's the spirit that quickened it; the flesh profited nothing." Your human effort strength will never profit you nothing in Jesus. But it's the spirit that quickens it. Only the spirit that can quicken. And listen to what Jesus said, the flesh profit nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And, you know, I want to show you today uh, that this life is the quality that God himself is. Jesus said, I come in John 10, 10, that you have life. You have the quality that, that of the character or the love that God is. And you have that more abundant. That means it keeps working for you over and over and over again. It never stops. Amen. And so the words that I speak of you now, many disciples left him, didn't walk with him no more. And Jesus asked the 12, will you also go away? Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You, you have the words of eternal life. Just think about that. Do, do you really believe? Are you sure that Jesus, because then you go to verse 69. And, 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 and Peter and them said, Lord, we believe and are sure that you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. <laughs> when you're really sure and believe Jesus the Christ, Son of God, listen carefully at this. This might be one of the greatest statements I make in this series. When you really sure and believe that Jesus the Christ, the Son of God, you believe he has the words of the quality. And, and, and instead of you trying to get him and praying to get him to do stuff, what you'll seek is to hear him. You'll seek to hear him. See? And Proverbs 3, 6, and acknowledge him in all your way. See? What do you acknowledge him? Well, he knows everything. He'll direct your path. Acknowledge him. Acknowledge he has the words of eternal life. Acknowledge him. This, this is acknowledge him. What? He's the Christ. He's Son of God. He has the words that can do. I remember back in 1988, I had two flats. I had an old 78 T Bird. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I was driving on, on the metal. You know, wasn't no more rubber. We were on the metal. And I had two flats at one time. Down there, near. The mother. And um and I got so mad and so frustrated. I wanted to get out and kick my car for letting me down. And Jesus said, get out and dance right now. That's 11 30. It's 11 30 in the daytime. All oh, them people down there just slowed down and watched me dance around my car. See, what is that, Pastor? Jesus is bringing the quality of life. That God, I, you know, I don't know if the Lord will tell you to do nothing like that. But I'm going to tell you something. He's always going to get you in the midst of your troubles to have a obedience to his words. He's always going to tell you to go give, go, go tell somebody he loves them. He's going to tell you to go forgive somebody. 
<clears throat> he is always going to give you an act of obedience, especially when you're frustrated because he's got to knock you out of that to get you over to being thankful for what he's done for you. Let's get you over in faith. And so that's why the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, be thankful in everything uh, in Christ Jesus. You're not thankful for cancer, or AIDS, or uh, a car wreck, or your house burned down. No, you be thankful for what God's done for you in Jesus. He's made a way to fix that. I don't care how bad it looks. See, and, and so, so when you really understand Jesus of Christ, the Son of God, you understand that he absolutely knows what to tell you to do. And when I got out of dance around, that, around my car, Jesus said, there's a red truck coming here in 30 seconds, and he's going to help you. And a red truck pulled up, and he, I didn't have no spare time. I didn't have no love wrench to take nothing off. He had all of them. I don't know if this was an angel or a man. But he took both of them tires off, took them up to the Exxon on 12th and Broad. They had a mechanic shop. And, <clears throat> and so I was, I got kind of nervous. I didn't have no money. So I started praying in the spirit. And, uh, you know, the devil showed me a picture of me back in jail and saying, you're going to jail. You know, you shouldn't be up there getting your car fixed. But, but the Lord told me to go there. And this man came out with this big old cigar, cursing, mean, talking ugly. I prayed faster. And, and I, I, uh, he said, I heard you was a preacher. Yes, sir. He said, I used to go to church when I was little. He said, you know, I ain't been to church in years. said, I hadn't been able to give nothing. He said, that first time we took off, said we patched it up for you. It might last seven days. It might be less. He said, but it'll never go two weeks. He said, the other time was so, the metal done come out of it. Said we couldn't fix it. But we had a man came in this morning. He bought four new tires from us. He didn't like the right tire. We told him wasn't nothing wrong. He said, no. <laughs> we said, well, sir, we can't give you another tire. Well, I'll buy it. And so we, we could not use that tire as a new tire, and we don't sell used tires, so we, we put it in the back to be taken off. He said, uh, that, that tire fit your car. Whoa, whoa, glory to God. Whoa, what are you saying, Pastor? God already got your stuff fixed. You might not see it yet, but he already got a plan to bring you out. And, and, and you got to learn how to re rejoice be of good cheer, uh, you, to, to produce this eternal life and to get him to say something. He's never going to say something when you are talking ugly and depressed and worried and stressed. Now, now look over in Matthew. This, this is another good one. Chapter 16, verse 13. And when Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea and Philippi, he asked his disciples, said, who do men say I the son of man? And they said Elijah, Jeremiah, uh, John the Baptist, Elijah, others, Jeremiah, one of the prophets. Jesus said unto them, but whom say you that I am? Now he was real interested. And I'm telling you today, saints, at the sound of my voice, Jesus is interested. Who do you say he is? Who do you ought to hear what people say? Terrible. So God, what does that mean? The Christ, what does that mean? See, see, you have to get back to the one who came from God, the one God sent to represent him. Got to get back to that. And 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 and, and Peter. Oh, I'm telling you, don't be so hard on Peter. You know, when, when he got out of the boat, he, he he feared and doubted, but he did get out of the boat. Jesus said, oh, you have little faith, but he had some faith. The other 11 didn't have none. Simon Peter answered, 
Thou the Christ, the Son of the living God. See, what does that mean? You're the one with the words that come from God. The words that produce the quality and life of God. When Jesus told Peter, come. See, because Peter said, Lord, if it be you, and Jesus already told him, it's me. Be not afraid, it's I. And so Peter said, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come. Now what? Jesus said, come. Right there on that word, when he said, you and I can say it <laughs> all day long, ain't no eternal life on. But when Jesus said, there was enough power of God on that one word for Peter to step out of that boat and the water would hold him up. Now, I tried this in my, my bathroom. Yeah, I, I mean, I fell straight down in the water. Well, well Pastor why? He didn't tell me. Got to come from his lips. And, and, and so I can't believe the Lord. I tried to believe the Lord to walk on, on water in my shower. I, I done it in a pool. It's right there on the edge, you know. And, and, and I said, stand up, water. The name of Jesus. Man, I went straight down. Why? Jesus didn't say it. The only way I could believe it is Jesus would tell me. Oh, if you get that revelation right there, it's life changing. When you quit trying to believe the Lord for stuff that the Lord didn't tell you. And, and uh, you know, a lot of preachers preach that, you know, just step out. And if it ain't God, you messed up. And I don't believe in that. I believe in hearing this voice, getting the unction from inside, and then uh, following that unction of the Holy Ghost. And so listen, listen to what uh, Peter and them said. You're the Christ Son of God. And Jesus answered them. Now you got to catch this revelation uh, in, in Matthew 16, verse 17. He said, blessed art thou. Whew, did you get that? See, when you respond that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the one who's coming to explain everything to us. He knows everything about God. <laughs> let me read you this. Hold on in Matthew 16, Matthew 11, verse 27. Jesus said, all things are delivered to me and my father. No man knoweth the son but the father, neither knoweth any man the father, save the son. And Jesus said, and he to whomsoever the son, now get this, we will reveal him. Jesus has to reveal the Father to you. I, I like the Amplified Bible. This makes this absolutely clear. In uh, Matthew 16, uh, no, I'm sorry, Matthew 11, 27. Now listen to this. Um, Matthew 11. I had 16. Okay, here it is now. Now listen to this carefully. Jesus said, all things have been delivered to me, entrusted and delivered to me by my Father. Everything. Everything Jesus said, everything Jesus spoke, everything Jesus did came from the Father. So you get a real picture of God when you hear Jesus and see Jesus. See him in action. And Jesus said, and no one, no, not, not Moses, not Adam, not Solomon, not, not Elijah, not Jeremiah, not Adam and Eve, or, or even one of the prophets. No one fully knows and accurately understands the Son except the Father. Well, well, now, he didn't say nobody didn't know nothing about God. He said nobody knows and fully understands. Listen, how to act just like God, nobody but Jesus Christ. He never seen him once. He flat knows how to do it. And so, and then Jesus said, no one accurately understands the Son except the Father. No one fully knows and accurately understands the Father except the Son. 
Now listen to these words that came straight from Jesus' lips. You read it? Listen to this. And anyone to whom the Son deliberately wills to make him known. Get that. See, anyone to whom the Son deliberately wills to make Jesus known. To make God known. Jesus is the only one can make God known. And people didn't be trying. <laughs> people be saying stuff. Say, Man, Jesus didn't teach that. Jesus didn't say that. Oh, I'm telling you, people be saying all kinds of stuff. But we need to be taught right to hear Jesus. And, and, and saints, you know, I, I teach this, um, that all Christians need to go start over if they didn't do this way and go build your house on the foundation. That's coming to Jesus, hearing his words, his teachings, saying his commandments, and doing them. Then, then when Jesus said, I'll show you who he's like. He's like a man who's built a house, dig deep, laid a foundation on the rock. When the storm beat on him up on that house, Jesus said, it could not shake it because it's founded on the rock. And so what Jesus is telling you is, is coming and hearing him, is coming and hearing the words of eternal life that when you do them, <clears throat> you're going to produce God in every situation in your life. Every situation you can produce God. You can, I mean, I have lived this. I know. You can have love, joy, and peace. Even in the midst of death. My grandma went home to be with the Lord. 2014. And, uh, I had joy. I had joy. Jesus taught me how to be happy. She went to heaven. What in the world? I want her to stay down here forever. And I really loved her. And and the Lord, the Lord taught me. I I, I lost my dog in 2012. And I really loved my dog. And in all my Christian walks since 1988, I really had, hadn't had nothing close to me die. My dad went home to be with the Lord, 96, but I, I, I hadn't had nothing close to me. And and uh, uh, I, I, I'd come home, I didn't see my dog there. He'd always be at the back door, wagging, happy, glad to see us. Uh, and, and, and I, I couldn't get it off of me. See? I couldn't get that off of me. It, it, was, it, it, was just, it just stuck on me. I couldn't get it off. And so I, I went and, 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 and uh, I was in the shower. I said, Lord Jesus, Lord, I, I, I done tried everything. I, I can't get this off of me. About my dog name. <laughs> Lord, will you teach me? See, this is how every Christian ought to be. And because I done tried quoting some scriptures, see, I need to hear Jesus. I need to speak what he said and do what he told me where I can get free. And Jesus said this to me. He said, yeah, I, I've been going through the same thing. He said, many of my creation I'm getting ready to be separated from. And Jesus started crying and said, Many of my creation, I'm getting ready to be separate. And was crying, telling me. I said, well, Lord Jesus, what do you do? How do you handle that? He said, I always go to the cross where I loved everybody at. He said, that's the only way I get comforted is I know I did something about it. And he still cried. I did something about them going to, not going to hell. They didn't take advantage of it. Believe them. Receive them. He said, now, you, you do this. He said, did you love your dog? Jesus asked me, did you love your dog? Oh, yes, sir. Did you take care of it? Yes, sir. 
Did you do everything you could for him? Yes, sir, I did. He said, that's your comfort. I said, I got it, Lord. And I, I got joy. And it lifted. And the burden lifted. And and and, and then, then Jesus said this to me. <laughs> do this with your grandmother. And he know how much I love her. And, and so I, I always took care of my grandma. Looked after, did everything. Anything, 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 everything. Everything. Bought the groceries. Uh, uh, took care of, fixed anything out there. Broke. Uh, uh, you know, sent your ass, heated, unit. It didn't matter. I did everything for her that I could. He said, that's your comfort that you loved her. And, 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 and so say, say, let, let me tell you something. You, you can't buy this kind of revelation. When, when you done love your, your parents, your grandparents, you love somebody in your family or not in your family. You did everything for them. You are not supposed to be saved. Your comfort is you love them. You really love them. And that's why you better be careful how you treat people. And, and I, I learned from that. That, 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 that uh, if, if you live and love everybody around you as Jesus loved you, you never be saved that they go home and be with the Lord because you love them. And so here, uh, 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 Jesus told Peter, blessed art thou. Now, it was the other 11 disciples there. He never called none of them blessed. He's only going to call the person blessed who knows who he is. That he's the Christ, Son of the living God. And, and we, we broke that down in John 6, verse 668, that Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Then Peter said, and we believe and assure you're the Christ, Son of God. When you believe Jesus Christ and, and, and he's the Son of God, you're believing he has the words of the quality of life that God is. And you should seek him to get those words, to get him to say something about the Holy Spirit to you. Tell you, if you look back, when he told you to do something, you went and done it, you, you produce God in that situation. And you're doing it all of them. I do it in all of them. Blessed art thou, Simon Bar Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed this unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, Thou art Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church. Now, here's the rock. <laughs> so you go back to Luke 6. So you got to have some more scriptures, man. You can't just take no one scripture and try to make it say what you want it to say. Make no doctrine out of one. But Jesus said in, verse, in Luke 6, 47, whoever cometh to me, Heareth my sayings and doeth them, I'll show you to whom he's like. He's like a man which built a house, dig deep, laid the foundation on rock, rock. When the flood arose, the stream beat from him against that house. It could not shake it because it's founded on the rock. Now here's the rock. The rock is coming to Jesus. The rock is hearing his sayings, his words, teachings, commandments. And the rock is doing them. Now you're producing Jesus. You're not producing you. You're loving others as he loved you, not producing you. You're not loving them the way you feel like loving them. You're loving others the way he loved you, producing you. You're continuing in his love. You're not continuing in your love. And you can have a love as long as his love's on top of it. You can love your kids, your family, your spouse. You can love people all you want as long as Jesus. Love is on top. So that your actions never leave the love that Jesus loved on the cross. And so the rock saints here in, in Matthew 16 is coming to Jesus. And Jesus said, I'm going to build my church on this. So Jesus is building his church on people coming and hearing and doing what he said. And listen to this. 
He said the gates of hell will not prevail. Why? They didn't prevail against Jesus. They won't prevail against his words. It was his words that the devil could not handle. Every time Jesus resists the devil, it was by it is written words. He didn't want the devil with just, I'm Jesus. No, oh, he didn't want the devil. He whooped the devil with words. And that's what you're going to have to whoop him with. Jesus gave me authority. Satan in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I'm, I'm telling you, power comes. Well, my time's up today. But, but you want to you want to learn this, saints, that Jesus done gave you these keys. And we'll we'll talk about that tomorrow. On, on, on the screen is our address. I want to make available to you the words of eternal life. The words of the quality of life God is. And uh, for a love gift of thirty dollars more, I'll add my new book. Uh, the Believer's Guide to Christ. This book will bless you. I mean, listen, you know somebody in prison, somebody bound, somebody hurting, send them that book. And uh, for a love gift of $30 or more to help our ministry, we'll, we'll send this in, in, in a free copy of the book to Jesus is the Answer Ministries, Post Office Box 292112, Nashville, Tennessee, 37229. And you can go to robertscaleministry.org and get the information and, and pay for it with a credit card and we'll get this series right out to you. I know it'll be a blessing to you, saints. It will be a blessing. So don't, don't procrastinate. Amen. Also, I want to invite you to Jesus as a church. A church that's alive is worth the drive. And we're in Watertown, Tennessee. And it's not that far from uh, Lebanon and about 30 minutes or so from Nashville. Depends on what part of Nashville you live in. But I'm telling you, saints, the glory of God is there, the presence of God. And if you want to grow and mature uh, and develop in the, in the real Jesus, uh, then I encourage you to come. I know it'll be a blessing to you. And uh, I tell you, our, our service times is, Seven o'clock on Thursdays. I submit we serve on Thursday, seven o'clock. And then Sundays, nine o'clock Sunday school, ten o'clock regular service. We do have nursery and children church. Well, my, my time's up today. Say so I want to thank my friends and partners. Thank you for helping me. Thank you so much for supporting us and, and helping us to continue to get the gospel out. We love you and thank you. My prayers is for you, saints. God continue. Richly bless you and keep you. Well, my time is up. My prayer now for you is that you will know the love of Christ that passes knowledge and be filled with all the fullness of God. For Jesus as the ministry, I'm Pastor Robert Scales. Remember, as Christ loved you on that cross, go live his love toward everybody and have a blessed day. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye-bye.